country. Well, um, my my opinion is that there would be, but we don't all have the same opinion here. But mine is, uh, you would have things like police and fire and all this stuff, uh, regardless of whether or not the government existed. There's services that need to be provided, and in fact, they're all provided by people anyway. Roads aren't built by the uh, nine people on the borough or by the people in Juno or by anybody in Washington, D.C. Roads are built by people who work for road construction companies, right? Roads are designed by engineers. Um, us, you know, regular people in, in the working class, as it were, we do all the things anyway. Uh, we just choose to have it administered horrendously inefficiently by a bureaucracy that's elected by a mob. And so my point is that the the market already provides you know, 99% of the services and goods that we use in our lives more efficiently than the government does. And so why not just shift that other 1% over to the market as well? And and this is actually the trend in history. You know, under the king, uh, the king was responsible for all this planning of, of the entire uh, lordship, right? Basically the entire economy. And when parts of that economy were shifted to the merchants, that was when basically the... Um, the discovery of economic science happened, and this huge uh, uptrend in the standard of living happened that hadn't happened for all of human history. You know, up until 1700, people lived basically the same as they did, you know, for all of time. And so we're trending away from state control or, or divine control of any aspect of our lives. And so I advocate uh, pushing that further. And and actually, the uh, the founders, well, some of the founders, actually were told that the amendment process to the Constitution would not be a process by which the Constitution could just be changed, but they were told that it was a process by which the Constitution could slowly lose or have power taken away from it. So so the federal government would start out with X amount of power in 1787, and through amendments to the Constitution, they could erode that power as it became less and less necessary. Okay, so you do not want any elected representatives in government? Is that the use of The use of force to get stuff, which is what government is, right? These, government is, is the power to steal from people and the power to redistribute. All government is socialism to some extent. The use of force is destructive of wealth. The only thing that builds wealth in society is free exchange, free voluntary exchange between people. So, yeah, I don't advocate the use of force because it's destructive of wealth. We're going to try to fit in one more uh, uh, call here before we move on. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. Who's this? Is this me? It might be you. Who is this? This is Caleb. Caleb, what's on your mind? Well, it, this is pretty hot, to- hot topic for me. Um, I was friends with a state trooper for many years, and he shared some stories about when he went down to Florida, and they did some cross-training with the Florida state troopers. And he said that the way that they treated people down there was appalling. He said they they treated people like they were animals. And one of the things that he said that, that always uh, made me think, he said that being a cop, you kind of get this attitude after a while that everybody's a criminal, that you your guard is constantly up because you never know, if, you know, whoever you're dealing with is going to try to kill you. So you do kind of get this mental attitude, and I think that's where a lot of this comes from, this abuse of power is they just they get to a point where they just view people as dogs, animals, and criminals, and so they treat them as such. Yeah, well, you know, to viewing everybody as a criminal, um, when we decide through our representatives or through voting to enact all these goofy laws that they have to enforce, you know, we when we make our, our neighbor a criminal because we don't like what they do, then we shift that burden of, of going to our neighbor and addressing our concerns to the cops, right? We socialize all of our all of our conflicts and we yep. dump them on the cops. So we always expect, oh, there's a you know, there's a problem with my neighbor. Somebody's, you know, making too much noise or burning their wood stove or whatever. Let's call the cops so he can go and, and deal with this guy who's obviously gonna be upset, you know, that he's being disturbed. And so when we when we uh, give away our, our own responsibility to deal with our own conflicts wait, wait, and wait, wait, dump wait. it on somebody else. Wait, wait, wait. Are you are you suggesting that if I have a problem with my neighbor, I should go over there and, and ask my neighbor to knock off whatever he's doing that's bothering me? <laughs> yeah, it's a revolutionary concept. What? Right. I, mommy, but, he's touching me again. <laughs> well, maybe if they're doing that, you'd, you'd want some some backup, maybe get your other neighbors involved in that one. But uh, 
well, yeah, when we dump all this on onto the cops, they're going to have to. I mean, they're going to react that way because 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 we've asked for all these laws, we have made everyone a criminal. And so and so when the cops are told to enforce X, Y, and Z statute, yeah, they're going to view everybody as a criminal. Well, yeah. we are. I mean, you basically are a criminal. Uh, right. Everyone yeah. is. There yeah, is because nothing. of the legal system we have. Right. Basically, have everyone is a criminal. You have broken a law. Everyone in this room, everyone that hears us, guess what? You're a criminal because you have broken a law. Whether you've been caught yet, whether you've been taken to court yet, you have broken a statute or a regulation, and you are a criminal. And the core of that problem is it's all crimes against the state. Well, part of the problem, too, is that every time you turn around, the law has changed. I mean, look at the uh, the fishing game. You don't know if you if you go out there and try to act on what the regs were last year for fishing or for hunting, there's a good possibility that you are breaking the law this year. Oh, yeah. I had that happen to me specifically where uh, I got a registration permit. I bowed down to the state and got one to hunt a moose and uh, turned in my registration permit with my hunting tags, which... I'll just skip on that part, how I feel about it. Anyway, so sent them all in and uh, to the state who owns all the game and basically send it to God because they are God because they own the animals. And the following year, I went down to get another registration tag and was told, well, you can't get one because you didn't send yours in last year. Well, sure I did. No, you didn't. Oh, well, yeah, I did. I know I did. Well, no, you didn't. Okay. <laughs> Well, I couldn't get, I can't get a permit, a registration tag. I can't file for, uh, put in for a draw hunt. And I asked specifically, I said, well, did you get my other tags? Because they were all in the same envelope. Oh, yeah, we got them all. Let's see. Let's look at your history. Yeah, you've always sent them in, but you didn't, we didn't get this one. She even admitted to me that, you know, maybe 20 to 50% of the tags that get mailed in that go to Anchorage don't end up coming to Fairbanks to get lost in the process somewhere. I said, all right, so you understand, give me my tag. Oh, no, it doesn't matter. You're you're past your uh, time to to appeal this process. And I said, what process? You never contacted me. Well, I tried calling you. You did. I never got your phone call. Well, I left a message. Oh, I never got the message. Well, actually, I'm looking at my notes here, and your, uh, your message machine was full, so I never left you a message. So you're taking my privilege to hunt this year because you didn't get my registration tag even though i'm telling you i sent it in you have all my tags from previous years you have the tags from last year that we're sending with this one yep and i can't appeal it nope you missed out yeah but the key word there josh is they took your privilege my privilege exactly so yeah. now i have a choice of either waiting my year and trying to follow the system again or going out and shooting a moose and then you'd be doubly a criminal because then you'd be a poacher and you'd be taking that game. I'd be a criminal criminal. A criminal criminal. You'd be a. That's. Right. Huh. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Just, you go ahead, I Caleb. Just, I just wanted to say one more thing. My my concern <laughs> for the people that are listening, you need to realize. People need to wake up and realize is as the government continues to take our rights, which they are in, in the process daily of doing in the Supreme Court continues to give police a more free reign to do what they want, where do you think this is going to end? I mean, we've already seen from the 80s how things have changed, you know, even from the 60s, the way the police were, and this evolving that's happening with our police department. It, it's going to be full-on Nazi style before too long. And, it, you know, one disaster is, is going to change everything. You know, it's never going to go back to the way it was. It's going to be full-on a police state. Never let and, a crisis go to waste. Yeah, right? Hurricane Katrina was the prototype, so get ready yeah. for that in your neighborhood. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate your time. Thanks. Hey, man. thanks, Caleb. Uh, 458 Talk is the number. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Yeah, good morning. Uh, Frank Turner here. Hey, Frank. What's on your mind? Uh, Hi, Frank. How you doing, man? Oh, quite a few things. You know, this whole innocent until proven guilty is a damn joke in the court of law. You have to prove your sin. Well, prove yourself innocent. Let's hope you have a fully informed jury to do so. But uh, I noticed in today's paper, uh, talking about all the, all the activities in Fourth of July, I can't even find the word Declaration of Independence even mentioned in there. You notice that? Well, I, yeah, I actually word. I saw that too. But uh, that's uh, revol- you know 
we don't really want to get into that, Frank. You know how those guys were. Yeah. They're psychotic. Uh, they said that all men were endowed by the Creator to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness amen. and real property. And we don't. You yeah. Know, you I can't even get a. You can't even get an elected official to admit that anymore. Right. They look at that and they go, "Wow, is that from Exodus or something?" Or they don't even know that. that you do have the right to property as long as you pay right. the borough. Uh, you have Dave Gissel there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Brent Ritchie. Uh, I really appreciate what you're doing, the uh, uh, Australian Scholar Book Club. I try to follow it on the Internet. But, uh, you know, for the namesake of using Campaign for Liberty, I really feel you should have this in a public forum, not at Natalie Howard's or Frank Turney's house or Michael Duke's house or Steve Floyd's house. Yeah, we, uh, we, we have, have. Wait a minute. Let me finish. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I've sent uh, quite a few emails out, and uh, uh, Brent said, well, what about the resource to have it? Listen. Uh, we have the news minus brief. It don't cost you nothing. We have the community calendar, Channel 11. Don't cost you nothing. We got the Noween Library. We got Mary Sides. We got the Burlington Cemetery City. All the, to have the Australian Scholar Book Club out in the open for the public if we're going to use the Campaign for Liberty namesake. Because listen, that started in 2008 on the Ron Paul, as you remember, and that's my only criticizing why you're having it at, at someone else's house where you only have your like a little private club. And that's my opinion. You have a right to free speech. But if you're going to use the name, state, the campaign for liberty, have that group club out in the open. And I think you're doing a good favor. I mean, as far as the information, information put out educational from some of them scholars is excellent. But don't you feel you should have it out in a public forum? Yeah, we, we actually did have uh, yeah, our first couple. year. Well, actually, the first year that we were doing it, um, we had the meetings in town. And um, it, that we just the, the people who are showing up it was the same people and so we we uh had some at my house just because it was convenient we could you know sit around have a few beers while we're talking about books which is not something we can do in public uh, because of the state of the laws and then and then natalie's like why don't we have it at my house a little closer to town so we've been doing it there and of course anybody is welcome to come and if there's a you know, if somebody wants to reserve a, a public forum or work on that, I don't have the time to do that. That's another reason we've we've been well, having it at people's houses. But if somebody wants to reserve a public room and post it up on the meetup and say, hey, you know, I got the Nolween Library for our next meeting Wednesday, I am all for that. That'd be great because it'd be well, a lot easier. It'd be a lot easier for people to get into that. Well, you can touch base with me. I'm a media monkey, and I don't mind doing that. Okay. I yeah, we'll, you, we'll. I think you would get more people involved. Absolutely, that'd yeah. be great. Do you have food at this thing? Because yeah, we usually have some food. Oh, I might come. <laughs> okay, I really appreciate the show. I was thought I was hallucinating. Here it is Saturday, and we're talking about liberty. I know, huh? Thanks, Frank. Thanks, we're out Frank. of time. Appreciate the call. Uh, by the way, is that Australian or Austrian? It's Austrian. All right, the Austrian uh, book club. But there are some Austrians in Australia. So. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> we're going to try to start focusing a little bit about the building across the road there here in the future. All right, we'll see you next week. 660 AM, online at KFAR.